Welcome to the number one show and the source of truth for all things medtech. Here, we reveal the secrets and stories behind the investments, science, and commercialization of the medtech industry. Every week, we'll take you on a wild ride with the biggest names in the game, from entrepreneurs and investors who are shaking up the market, to healthcare providers who are revolutionizing the way we think and practice medicine. So hold on tight and get ready for a journey like no other. This is the State of MedTech. Welcome back, everyone, to another special episode of State of MedTech. This is a very special one because, you know, we hit episode 100. It was monumental. It was exciting. And here at the State of MedTech, we're always looking for ways to take it up another level because we work in an amazing industry with amazing people. We want to bring you those stories. And so today uh, is a special guest, you know, somebody I've known for quite a while. That's Dr. Mohammed Taleb. He is the director of, of neuroscience and stroke over at Banner uh, Desert Medical Center. And when I reached out to him first, you know, I, I reached out and I was like, I was like, Dr. Taleb, I was like, I really want you to come on my show. A lot of people have requested you. And he replied back, yes, but with one condition. And that is, I got to fly down to San Diego to do this in person. And I said, absolutely. In which case I said, well, I can't do this at my house. And so I searched around and we found a fantastic studio. Big shout out to Signature Sound here in San Diego. Beautiful studio, amazing staff. And yes, it is a nice studio. Let me tell you. So if you're a med tech company looking to do any kind of recordings, any kind of content, I highly recommend this studio because... It is beautiful. Um, but that being said, we're going to talk about some really interesting topics today, which is the evolution of acute stroke and just as importantly, the technology that come along with it. And so, Dr. Taleb, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited about this. I know that, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we've we been uh, friends at least online since at least three years and um uh, you see my passion in the case of the week. So I think this is something that's very important. And as you know, stroke is the number one cause of disability in the, in the world. Um, and that's what I deal with. And I just want people to know that now um, we can actually reverse something which we thought was, was irreversible. We can restore function. Someone that couldn't talk or move their arms, they're moving again, they're talking again. So um, thank you for allowing me to talk about this. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And before we jump into it, I just want to remind our audience, the clinicians, whether you're a physician, a nurse, a PA, don't forget the state of MedTech covers your CME credits because we make the majority of our episodes CME eligible through your reflection. So check the show notes below, whether you're on Spotify, YouTube, or anything else, uh, and click the link. You'll unlock an AMA PRA Category 1 CME credit. Make sure to write down a sentence or two of what you learned and also what you will do with the knowledge, and you get that CME credit for free. That's thanks to the folks over at CMFI. So that being said, All sure, right. sure, the floor is yours, man. All let's, right. ju let's jump into it and let's, well, talk, let's, about, let's, let's talk about stroke. Let's talk about stroke. So again, um, technology impacting functional outcomes and saving lives, and we're basically going to go over the evolution of of basically acute stroke care. Um, the summary and, and what we're gonna go over, we're gonna define what a stroke is because some people may not know what a stroke is and so we're gonna go over that and how people present clinically and then you know the need for a mass campaign for awareness because like many other disease states like heart attack, um, it's really, um, it's time sensitive, meaning we, we have to be able to identify it right away so we can get people to, to the hospital or, um, or to the proper comprehensive stroke center versus primary stroke center because there's different like designations right away. And then I'm going to talk about the evolution of um, basically the uh, massive benefit and, and, and these trials because there was an evolution in the trials because the trials were all negative. Then boom, in 2015, because the technology changed, you know, and so basically, I'm showing how technology actually helped us to make this, 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 the studies better. There's newer studies now, and then I'm gonna go over how I approach things, which, which I call it precision personalized stroke care. We're gonna talk a little bit about my the social media case of the week, and I talked about this um, uh, CKS continuous knowledge sharing and how I, love I feel. That. It's very important to share what we know. Quick, quick sidebar. I mean, yeah. what, what's you, you know. Uh, the one thing that I think we're kind of in like a uh, another version of the Gutenberg revolution because for the first time, like we're learning, we talked about this in the car where 
clinicians usually, um, when you learn about a new technique or procedure, it's once a year at the annual conference. And even post the con post conference, it takes a year or two to adopt a new technique versus now more physicians are posting clinical cases, having discussions on LinkedIn and changing their practice like in real time. How influential has social media, specifically I'd say LinkedIn, been to your practice? Um, I, I think it's had lots of Im Im impact. I mean, uh, we were looking at some numbers of, of devices used and stuff like that. And you, you'd be amazed that you can basically nudge people, you know, or it's not really nudging, you're, sh you're, you're reminding them, right? You're taking a little mental space. Hey, remember there's this product which you can use for this, right? Because sometimes we get used to, hey, I'm just going to do it this way. Stint assisted coil, stint assist coil. This is just an example of treating a brain aneurysm, right? But then we're like, no, there's other things. There's flow diverting, there's intrasacular flow diverting. And so what it does is it at least allows you to say, hey, let, let me consider this. And so I feel it's, it's impacted my practice, but I feel, you know, this case of the week has, has impacted other people's practice as well. And, and we basically inf influence each, each, each other. And yeah, I, I, I do believe that the quality of care and the adoption of newer things that, that may be safer is probably, as you said, it's a lot faster than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and then we can talk about the, the future of uh, stroke care. So I'm just going to begin. Yeah. So uh, stroke statistics, so stroke is also known as cerebrovascular um, uh, accident. Uh, here we go. Uh, yep. Um, and, and basically, there's two types of strokes. There's ischemic or hemorrhagic. Ischemic means that there's a clot and it's cutting off the, the, the blood supply uh, to, to part of the brain. Um, and then uh, hemorrhagic just means that there's a blood, um, a blood vessel that ruptured or an aneurysm that like ruptured. And so there's blood inside of the brain. The blood can be on the brain or, or inside of the brain. That's the difference between subarachnoid hemorrhage and intraparenchymal. Not that important because I'm really going to concentrate on ischemic. Why am I concentrating on ischemic? Ischemic or clots that cut off blood supply is 85% or some studies say 83, but it's the lion's share of it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's the number one cause of disability in the developed world and the, and, and, and the undeveloped world of basically major disability. So this is not... It's not something small, you know, mm -hmm. I mean. I know companies that have actually uh, come out to solve this problem, like one great company, I love them, mm -hmm. a Harmonic Bionics, it's a robotic company, but specifically it's a robotic system to help with the rehabilitation post-stroke. Yeah. And that was like one of their main use cases, mainly for shoulder rehabilitation yep. and arms, but one of their main use cases was not shoulder injury, it was stroke. Correct. You know? Correct. And so that's. You know, exactly. And so we, 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 we see its impact and it's costing us anywhere from 58 to 79 billion, depending on, on which study you look at. And of the ischemic strokes, so um, ischemic, the clot strokes, you can have tiny little strokes that are very distal. So you have a little bit of facial droop and slurred speech, but you can still function, right? But the alveoles where the clot is really big, then you can't move half your body, your arm, your leg, you can't And you get talk. like a full, like hemiparesis. Hem, hem, hemi, hemiparesis, where you can't move half of your body. So those are the ones that we're really going to concentrate on because they're the most devastating. And LVO stands for? Large vessel occlusion. So Got LVO, it. large vessel occlusion. And they're Got the it. most devastating. So this is just little pictures in case people, subarachnoid, 3%, hemorrhage, about 10 to 12%, and ischemic, where there's a clot. And if you look over here... Right there? Yeah. This is a little clot right there. It was ischemic. Is it, in terms of its impact on mm -hmm. disability, is it more severe with ischemic compared to like hemorrhagic and subarachnoid? So hemorrhage, depending on size, can be more more devastating as well. Because essentially it's putting pressure on that part of the brain. It's putting the pressure on that part of the brain. And really, it depends on the type of bleed. Because you can have a shearing bleed, which shears the neurons, versus a slow ooze from, from veins or an AVM. Sometimes it'll sl uh, splay the tissue. Once the bleed comes down, you'll actually re restore some function. But most of the time, if you're in an academic center, yes, hemorrhag hemorrhagic strokes are worse, right? Got it. Uh, but LVOs are probably just as bad as hemorrhagic strokes. Subarachnoid hemorrhages, um, they can be, be devastating and they affect younger people um, because, um, you know, it used to be somewhere between 30 to 50% of people would die even before coming in. 
because, oh, because when, you, they hit like their head or something. That or also because of the there's lots of blood. It's almost um, you can also get what's called hydrocephalus or water on the brain. And if you don't relieve the pressure with an EVD right away, uh, that can cause like like herniation or or, or brain death. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. that, <laughs> just as, like as a new dad, my my 15 month old, he we were in the park and he like uh, was sitting on a bench and he fell back and hit his head. Mm-hmm. And I freaked out so mm-hmm. bad because that, that the first thing I thought it was subarachnoid hemorrhage, but mm-hmm. thankfully I was just overreacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no, that's a scary one because you, you can have that trauma and then nothing happens and then somebody can die like a few Correct. hours later, right? Correct. Yeah. So um, that's part of my areas of expertise. Yeah, I didn't go over this, but um, uh, I, I did training. I'm, I'm a I'm a neurologist by training. I trained at the Barrow Neurological Institute, but I did three more fellowships. One in neurocritical care which is dealing with all these neurological emergencies, traumatic brain injury, subarachnoids, hemorrhages, encephalitis, infections at Stanford. And I also did a stroke fellowship there as well. And then I did uh, neuroendovascular surgery where I do all these procedures and going up to the brain or neuro IR um, at, at the Medical College of Wisconsin. So part of my passion is these acute neur- neurological uh, um, emergencies because the, the brain, unlike other organs, you know, and uh, this is important too. Is um, I think I I, I, I I took it that slide, or actually maybe it's on the next slide. But the brain, you can't replace part of the brain. Like you can do a lung transplant, you can mm-hmm. do a heart transplant, you could do kidney transplant. You can live with one kidney. You you can't live with half a brain. Your body won't work, right? right. It's yeah. it's one of the organs where you really can't re- re- replace it, and it's very sensitive. So yeah. for instance, if someone has cardiac arrest, right? The heart comes back, the kidneys come back, the lungs come back, you know, after cardiac arrest, the brain doesn't. Anoxic brain injury is why we cool people, to prevent the brain. So the brain is two, is two to 5% of the body weight, takes 20% of the blood flow. Mm-hmm. That's how much energy is going into the brain, you know? And it makes sense because, you know, for one, mm-hmm. like I remember learning in medical school that, you know, the brain is a very selfish organ because like, yes. it'll, it'll, it'll <laughs> kill, it'll literally kill, like that's why like with alcohol <laughs> poisoning, like it'll kill, yeah. it'll kill other organs just yeah. to save itself. Yeah. But like in terms of how much energy it, it consumes, you know, for me, just for, for context, you know, I, I do weightlifting, I'll do jujitsu yeah. and everything. So on, on those days I'll burn, you know, somewhere between 2,500 to 3,000 calories, yep. right? But if you look at grand chess masters who are just sitting and playing chess, they burn up to like four or 5,000 calories just from the amount of, you know, energy the brain yeah. is producing. And, you know, me and my entrepreneurial uh, circle, we actually had a discussion about this, about the importance of sleep and diet and everything, because even though we're not doing physical activity, the amount, yeah, the amount of energy yeah. and caloric energy we're, we're expending through the brain is huge. Well, that's why someone like me that exercises and uses their mind, I eat 5,000 calories a day. I was going to say, I, I'm yeah. joking. Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey man, we're just we're just keeping it real. Just keeping it real, man. Absolutely. That's why. Hey, that's what, look. That's why I had you on this sh- on this show. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this is important. So by the end of the show, ninety to hundred people will have had a stroke. There is a stroke well, every I hope forty I don't have seconds. A stroke at the end of this, show. you know, forty <laughs> seconds. And uh, another thing is stroke thrombectomy for these large vessel occlusions where you go in and you pull out the clot is four times more effective than uh, PCI for the heart, okay? Because there's a 6% difference. For ours, it's anywhere from 10 to 30% difference in function. And so no one knows what the signs and symptoms of stroke are. I mean, like... Gray's Anatomy, um, Chicago ED is is the show called Chicago yeah. Med. I don't know what what these shows are, but everyone heart attack. I'm like, where is the stroke? World's number one cause of disability. Fate worth than death. Okay, have you heard of locked in syndrome? Oh, I have absolutely okay. heard of locked in. So syndrome. you get a clot in your basilar artery back here, right? You're awake, alert. You you know everything, but 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 you can't move. All you can do is just blink blink your eyes. Like, you, you have to take Terrible. that in, into context, and, and right? Let me ask you this. Or a, how many LVO, how, right, where you half the hemisphere, where you can't move half of your body and, and, and you're bed bound. So I, awareness around this disease is, I think it's, it's needed to, because we have to identify it early and people need to know, hey, this is a stroke. We need to go to the hospital. Yeah, sorry, go how on. Many, you, what I was going to ask is, um, you know, there's often... The primary cause, mm-hmm. right, uh, of pathology here, like let's say stroke, but 
how many secondary causes of death are where the root cause is stroke, but what's actually counted or attributed for the cause of death is something else? That's a good question. I don't know those statistics, but you're right. I don't think anybody's followed those statistics. Correct. But like, you know, so like how many people with strokes get aspiration pneumonia because exactly. they, because 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 they can't swallow. Yeah. Bed sores and then and then they they. The, you get uh, like a staph infection a staph or something? staph infection. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And so, you, no, you're right. These secondary causes of, of death is a lot. So from neurocritical care literature, subarachnoid hemorrhage, lots of these patients die, but lots of the reasons why they die is from cardiopulmonary infectious reasons, not so much from spasm or other things. And so what you said is, yeah, right on. And I was, what <laughs> I was going to say is like one of, the most, uh, one of the most common causes of death for people above the age of 65 is falling down. And so I would I would imagine that a lot of, you know, because I even had people in my family and friends who they, you know, they had some kind of stroke or an infarct, right? Yeah. But if that causes some hemiparesis or loss of function, yeah. right? And it's, it's an older person, they're above the age of 65 and they fall and die because they hit their head. Cause of death is the fall. Yeah. But the root cause is actually stroke, but that doesn't get counted. So these numbers are probably even higher. Correct. I would imagine. Correct, correct. And you know, um, we talked about fate worse than death. We talked about you, you can get a new heart and kidneys and all this, but the brain- It's no new brain. And, it's, and yeah. the brain is, it, it's, it's who you are. Uh -huh. it's, it's your ability to understand, to speak, to interact. It's the essence of being human and exchanging emotions, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm passionate about it because it, it, it impacts the human at, the essence of who they are. Sorry, it's no, you, no, wait, no, yeah, no, man. If if you don't have passion for for what you do, don't do You're it. In the wrong industry. You're in the wrong yeah, industry. Yeah, look, man. I, this is why this is why I love our our industry, and this is why I came back to it. You know, I spent a, you know a year and a half in software, and the people in tech they're like, man, where are you going back to med tech? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I was like, maybe because like everything that that we do there actually involves like improving lives, saving lives, and yeah. not you know, mm. making some reverse algorithm for some sales software, <laughs> you, know, like, I don't, you know, so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's why. And then uh, again, uh, this, this statistic, the 1.9 million brain cells die per, or, or connections die per, per, per minute. Stroke risk factors, they're cardiovascular, same as heart attacks, peripheral vascular disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, high cholesterol, lack, lack of exercises, smoking, is one of the number one modifiable one at least. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're very similar risk factors. So summary of concepts, what, what it is is time is brain, okay? Now different people's brains die at different rates, but in general, it's still the same thing. The curve may be like this, maybe like this where your brain dies in one hour, it may take 24 hours, but it's still the same curve, right? It's, it's, it's still, you, the, the brain dies oh, like over time. Now, um, uh, so there's a concept of something called uh, pen pen penumbra and core, and I'll go over it in the next one, but I'll show you right here. So core, like say, so this is the area that can die. This is the area that's actually dead, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that area that's actually dead grows over time where it's all dead, right? Mm. And so what you're trying to do, you're trying to pull out the clot, so you, you're trying to minimize all this and save all these fingers, right? right. Which is the area around there, because then then you can rehab. And the more tissue that that you can save, like like the better. If the core of the area is all dead, you you really can't save anything. And pulling out that clot is important because that clot is essentially including, uh, you know, blood flow, uh, uh, oxygen, all, all growth, growth factors, glucose, all growth these factors, things. lots of things, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that's why. And, and lots of our imaging, you know, at Stanford, we, we did lots of advanced imaging as, as, a, as a fellow there. They, they, they developed also artificial intelligence software called Rapid AI, uh, and, and we were using Rapid bef bef before it was a company. Um, and it was all about what tissue is dead and what, and what can we save. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and so that that's a concept, and the CT, MR, or, or or perfusion imaging, advanced imaging, again, is saying you see how technology allows you to be a better clinician and and, and save more people. So we're, we're 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 marrying those two, and in general, opening up the artery as soon as possible is best. So artificial intelligence, the Viz, Rapid, Brainomics, um, Nico Lab. They read the CTs, CTA, CTPs, and they send it to your phone within like a minute, you know, or five minutes, right? And so that's all about speed, right? 
um, the tool I invented, uh, Stroke Van, Van for vision, aphasia, neglect, that's a way to identify massive strokes. There's other LVO screenings like the Ray Scale, Fast ED, G Fast, all these things, right? There are ways to identify these things faster. So everything is about speed, right? So get that artery open, save as much brain as possible, and allow people to rehab. Um, and then um, systems of care, you know, systems of care meaning there's primary stroke centers versus comprehensive stroke centers. If someone looks like they're having a massive stroke, you take them to a comprehensive stroke center or a thrombectomy capable center where they can have the right procedure. Because what happened is you go to a primary stroke center, then you'll you'll be there and then they have to transfer you. That's an hour. Every half hour is a 10% difference. If you're adding an hour or two, you're talking about 10, 20, 30% difference in outcome. Now your procedure, which was showing 30% difference is no longer showing that. And so this is where technology, systems of care, everything marries together. But what's the overall theme? Reduce the number of dead tissues by going as fast as possible. Reduce that, that core or that area that's actually dead. All right. So this is it. This is basically saying over time, again, every person is different. Like I, I was, um, when, when I was a stroke follower, there was someone that came in within an hour, the tissue was all dead on CT. So um, again, in general, it, it takes more time. In blue, the penumbra, that's tissue that, that, that we can save. Now, what's interesting is um, there's this concept for my precision personalized stroke care. I don't care the large, how large it is, but that small area I can save, what's its function? And so there's sometimes where I'll go after a clot and people are like, oh, most of the PCA is dead. I'm like, but the thalamus, the relay area of the brain, that's only 20 cc's or 10 cc's. I'm like, yeah, but they can't see because of the big PCA clot or stroke. Mm -hmm. 60 cc's dead. That 10, 20 cc's is the, is the thalamus which controls, this the relay center, controls your ability to move and coordinate. So there's a patient I did a thrombectomy at at four days because the clot went from the P2 into the P1. That's the PCA, posterior cerebral artery, back of the brain. And it grew. At first, he couldn't see, but then he started to become plegic or basically couldn't move or feel half his body or coordinate. I went in, pulled out the clot. This is at four days, right? People are like, ah! <laughs> Did, did, did you do that? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Why did Why? they freak out about that? Because, because the, it's, because because the it, guidelines are because whatever, set, up to 20 Because the clots set in and the, the idea is Correct. if you pull, pull out, you pull out good tissue? Well, that and because people don't, people like to go with, within guidelines. And so this is personalities too. We talked about this, yeah, we did. this, this, this decision making. The reason why I read all the time is because I want to think better right? The better I think, like, like, like the better I feel like I can give like better care. Do you and feel so like this is, I was gonna say, do you feel like this is one of the issues and I don't want to say it's an issue. Okay. It, it, exists for, <laughs> it exists for a reason. It exists yeah. for a reason. But like medicine for the most part, mm. uh, it produces a majority of followers. Like you have to follow certain guidelines, do things yep. a certain way. If you mm -hmm. break away from the group, yeah. you will get ostracized, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so like, but there's some people that obviously just can't help themselves because they just say like, this doesn't make sense. Why are we doing it this way? Which is probably why both you and I get along so well. Because <laughs> a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense. And it's like, you know, as you develop better technology, you have better insights as to how to solve an old problem in a new way. Correct. You know, and it sounds like this is kind of what you were leading on to. Exactly. You know, and so there's the concept of like, yes, there is a slightly in 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 increased risk of bleed. But how I always approach things if the National Institute of Health thinks there's equipoise where they're gonna randomize people, why am I as a physician saying, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna offer anything? National Institute of Health, all these companies, Medtronic, Stryker, I don't know, Bolt, I don't know who's, who's, who's running all these uh, stroke trials now, r r r rapid from the artificial intelligence, Viz, whatever. If they think there's equipoise and, and we don't know the answer, why can't you have that conversation with, with the patient? Hey, I don't know, but this is what's happening now. This is what I see. This is my clinical judgment. We, we don't know, but offering a treatment is reasonable. I, I think that's the route, in my, my, my humble that, opinion, that's the route to go in terms of clinical bedside matter. I mean, look, the one thing that happened post pandemic is that I hate to say what, whether people like it or not, the medical community took a hit in the pandemic oh, yeah. because of the level of bravado and, and certainty they had during extremely uncertain times. And it's, yeah. it's blatantly obvious. Mm -hmm. And I think that every, people don't forget about that. So yeah. a lot of patients, when they go into, 
it's almost like there's this balance. You know, when you when you think of like a surgeon, right? Everyone thinks of uh, Alec Baldwin and Malice when, you know, when the surgeon, when he's like, he's like, you ask if I'm God, I'm, you know, or like, if I have a God complex, I don't have a God complex, I am God. Yeah. But when I go to a surgeon, I kind of want them to have yeah, a God yeah, complex because I want them to be extremely certain of what they're doing. Mm. That being said, if they're not, mm. and there's some, you know, wiggle room where they're like, I'm not sure. I kind of would like to know that. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think patients, they, mm. they, 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 they want that. It's kind of like in a weird way because of how powerful physicians are, patients have gone through this arc. You, you'll appreciate how metaphysical mm. this is. This mm. arc with doctors, the same way that a son goes through the father. Mm. Okay. With sons, mm. they go through three phases with their fathers. They idolize their father. Yeah. Then they demonize their father, mm -hmm. and then finally they humanize their father. Yeah. So with physicians for for millennia, mm -hmm. they're they're idolized. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the last you know few we're, we're years, we're kind of being demonized, being demonized right now. I'm bringing it back. Bring it back. I'm human, now, baby. I'm humanizing. Human. Yeah, Bring exactly. It back. <laughs> and I think, and I think this is I'm good and bad. Like, yeah, and all of us are like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Hundred percent. We have our positives and negatives. We don't know everything, and I think that's one thing that. Um, is important is that we know some things, some things black, white, there's, but lots of things are gray. And it's, gray. And it's okay to say it's gray, I, 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 I don't know. I think the more we accept that, the more we start to evolve medicine into more what people are trying to achieve, predictive health, precision medicine, and personalized medicine to say like, it's gonna be different. Like, look, the, the most popular religion these days, diets. Yeah, it's like any diet, like yeah. paleo, carnivore, etc. <laughs> and I've kind of come to the conclusion where I'm like, everybody's different. Like, there's some people that like function extremely well as vegans. I yeah. think it's a terrible yeah. idea, by the way. <laughs> but but they fun they, but they function. Yeah, there's yeah, a, yeah, like yeah. for me, yeah. uh, I function really well as like heavy heavy like meat. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and I think yeah, it's yeah. just different for everybody. There's no yeah. like one thing. Yeah, you know. Yes. No, you're you're right. I, I think um, people's bodies are different. I mean, we're getting into epigenetics -gen -gen as well. Yeah. Your your environment, what you do, your and your gen -gen genetics as well. So all these things, I believe, inf influence and 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 we're 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 not all the same. Yeah. Um. Um. Not only genetically, but also our environments are different as well. Uh. Yeah. Hundred percent. That has a well, huge impact yeah. on things. And you know, one thing I love and why I love the brain is like this resurgence of mind and body. Mm. But you know, and I'm like, I'm like sitting back, I'm like, we, in medical school, we learned about physiology. We know that you have a pituitary gland. We know there's a vagus nerve. We know that it controls your gut. We, we, we know like your nerves are everywhere. They, they, they control whether my vein's coming out or not. It's not coming out because it's cold in here, man. Omar, it's a little I too know, cold. Sorry. I'm just messing up. Yeah. But right? <laughs> like the nervous system controls all that. Why didn't we think there's a mind-body connection? Why yeah, is this I'll like you, all of a sudden I'm like, we knew the physiology. Like we knew how the brain, no, there's no, I'm like, no, I, you know, if we think about it, it's just as though it's like, it was so in our face that, 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 that we couldn't see it. You know, Anyways, I, I have, <laughs> like, like, uh, I have a thought and we'll, we'll, we'll move on. But my, my thing about this is I, I study, I, I really appreciate and study closely medical culture and history and yeah. psych the psychology. Of it. Mm. And I think part of the reason there's two, in my opinion, there's two reasons. Number one, if medicine can't put a finger on it, then it's 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 quackery. It's pseudoscience and everything. That's number one. Yep. And number two, with the mind body connection, mm -hmm. you know, like we show through like VR and everything, like the mitigation of pain and stress. Yep. And everything. But I think subconsciously, medicine, mm -hmm. especially surgery, but medicine as a whole, has a history of being very competitive, very like oh, yeah. close, close. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so, the, but the moment that there's that thing, mm -hmm. now you allow non clinicians into mm -hmm. medicine to have their opinion. I think doctors don't like that. And I think mm -hmm. in some ways I, I agree with that because I mean, I'm sure you've looked up on YouTube and everything. There's some like insane stuff being yeah. touted as like, heal yourself this way, right? But I think that the more medicine starts to be open-minded and saying, pun intended, by the way, there. Yeah. That, was, that was good, right? That was good. Um, by saying, you know, we don't know and that these things might have a connection we cannot explain. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, look, Medical science and science in general has not been able to explain intuition. Yeah. But it's one of the most powerful things in, on, in it, the planet. It we is. can't explain it. 
How yeah. does that work? Yeah, and you know, the you placebo know, effect. The, 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 That's when we should be studying more. How, yeah. Why does a placebo effect actually work? Right. And you know, what is this intuition like? You know, the, for instance, we used to be able to read faces, but now because of social media, kids can't read faces. And Isn't that pictures. interesting? Yeah. But how you sit, how your eyes are, you, you know, all this stuff, the energy you're giving off, I think all that we're subconsciously processing. Yeah, hundred percent. And some of it we're starting to, we're starting to, to to discover. But I think lots of it we still don't know. Yeah, because uh, I think there yeah. there's been consciousness around it. Now again, like through this media of like podcasting and stuff, thinking about how many people are, are exposed to, like, look at Andrew Huberman. How, how many yeah. people he's exposed to this idea of let's say like mouth breathing? Yeah, right. right. Jaws, we're both we both jaws are sized. Jaws are sized. Yeah, that's jaws are sized. <laughs> we're not. A pay, I'm not a paid spokesperson, but it is a great product. It's a great product. It is. But anyway, mm. moving on. <laughs> so yeah, so basically, we're trying to save as much brain, brain, brain as possible, and uh, that's basically it. So we have to identify these strokes first. So the most common thing is be fast. Mm -hmm. B is for balance. They feel off balance. I is eyes. You suddenly lose vision. F is for face. You have a facial dupe like this. Um, arm is weak, okay, or, or 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 numb, and then speech is basically you have difficulty speaking, which could be slurred speech, or it could be what's called aphasia. Aphasia is the ability to understand speech and to produce speech, okay. And so, just because you're speaking like this, it doesn't mean you're aphasic. It just means your muscles are weak and you have slurred speech. So there's a little bit of a difference there. There's a nuance, but this is what we usually use. Um, be fast or just fast, and T is for time. And so this is how to identify a basic stroke. But now we're in the era of large vessel occlusions, massive strokes. So now we gotta identify those because of those need to go to a comprehensive stroke center or we need to do CT, CTA and get everyone on board. This is good, but we have to add something to that. We're 20 minutes in. I got a controversial question to ask. Yes, because, go ahead. Because, do audio, it. because if I don't, um, I know how the YouTube comments will be. I'll, I'll be like uh, pinned for this. Clinically, what is your take on uh, on Senator Mitch McConnell when he when he froze? You remember, you know, that press conference? I actually, I don't watch any news. That's good. On, on purpose. I don't, I don't that watch, I don't watch, no, no, I don't watch any news like, either, but I saw it all over. <laughs> I saw it all over Instagram and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. wish I could, uh, I could, I could bring it up, uh, you know, but okay. So we'll have to, we'll have to come back. We'll have to come back to that. I, I, I want to have an answer, but I can bring it up on my phone. You want me to bring it up on phone? You, you bring, 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 bring it up on your phone. Up. Oh wow! Did you, hear the you just froze up. What is that like a like an ops on seizure, or or is it or is or is he about nope. to have a stroke? Right, sorry, a nope. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody's commenting on it, or or I mean, I'm sure people have commenting on whoa, it. Whoa! 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 Oh wow! So yeah. So what, what, yeah, what's, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. what's your what's your what's your what's your take I mean, on his like, he, he just was it because I was thinking that 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 could have been a TI, TIA or a seizure. That's what I was saying. I was like, either Damn. seizure or he, he, or he had a, a, TIA, a stroke. Yeah. yeah. TIA stands for? Uh, transient is, is ischemic attack uh. or, or accident. Basically, it's a mini stroke, but it doesn't leave permanent damage. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Sorry. Um, continue, so, but I have, to, I, have so, to, I have to ask about that. It's so we have, don't watch the news, though. Neither do I. Yeah. Except I, I do <laughs> I do use Instagram and social yeah. media. So that was all over Twitter, you know? Yeah. So. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little social media guy, too. Not... Not not like you, but you know, I, I do you know, share my case of I'll the week you, a lot. Social, social media, it's mm. it's like fire. You can use it to uh, cook a nice meal. You can use it to burn down your house too. Yeah. So it's a tool. It is. You know, it, it, it is. It, it a is tool. a tool. I uh, use social media. Mm -hmm. I try to make sure that social media does not use, use me. me. Yeah. No, that's that's true. That's very very true. So that's how to identify strokes. So then, so we talked about these two types of strokes, small vessel stroke and large vessel stroke. So how can you tell the difference? Small vessel, it's usually pure motor or sensory. So you have weakness uh, you know, or, 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 or numbness, but then a large vessel, you usually have these cortical symptoms. And that's why I invented this van scale of mine, right? And it's basically the same as, as everyone else. So V is for vision. Your eyes are forced over, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can't see half, half the world. A is aphasia. You may have slurred speech, but aphasia is like you, wa you uh, show someone a watch or pen, they can't say it. They literally like, 
right? Mm. Or you ask them to follow commands. They're like, close eyes, make fists. They're like, they they really don't understand aphasia. And then n- neglect is basically they're ignoring the fact that 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 they're having a stroke. Like you'll show them their their weak arm on the left is usually with left sided weakness. Right, and they're like, um, they're like, whose arm is this? They're like yours. They'll completely ne- neglect the fact that they're having. So that's van, will, van the van criteria. This is for like the the the, the bad alveos. This is this is for the these types, the alveos, large vessels. What percentage of those uh, would you say occur in the United States of all strokes? What percentage of, of them all are those? ischemic strokes? It depends on who you ask. Anywhere from ten to forty percent. That's a huge spread. Yeah, wow. it is. Okay, it is. Um, and we're doing more and more. We're going after I'm more and more clots because of the van criteria. Some mm-hmm. of them. They they might have one or two of the three and not all three. Is Correct. That right? That's so why there's a huge spread. Basically, the, the the van criteria. All you have to have is is one of those things. You have to have some arm weakness with any of those. That's it. Got you, it. And your van positive or negative. It's pretty easy. Like if you have no arm weakness, you're done in two seconds. Like no 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 arm weakness, your van negative. If you have arm weakness, then you test for vision, aphasia, neg- neglect. And if you have any of those, you're van positive because you're positive in weakness. And you're positive in one of the vents. I was going to say, I was like, this is definitely a USMLE step one slide right here. Yeah, this is the step one slide. For all the the MS ones and two, this is like screenshot. This is is, is a step one slide right here. This is step one slide. So (laughs) the reason why I like this is because it basically shows where I came up with this. And it's nothing more than the different areas of the brain. And so- And these are are, uh, damages to the cortex. To the cortex, right. And so if you have arm meekness plus forced gaze, you know both of these areas are gone. So you know this side is being affected. If you have arm meekness with neglect or vision loss, you know all of this affected. If you have arm meekness with vision loss and and your eyes are forced over or you can't talk or understand, then you know the entire brain is affected. So what this allows you to do, if there's two of these, you know this part is not working. That means that the artery is down here, which is feeding both of them. And so that's how you can tell when you have two of these symptoms it's a proximal clot or the clot is down here. If you only have one of these, then the clot is up here. It's very distal. It's not a very large artery. And TPA or clot busting medication will, will work for that. And so this is how I kind of came came, came up with this. Anyone that wants to be van, van certified, strokevan.com, we have over 8,000 people that have gotten certified. That's which amazing. Is, which is pretty cool. You developed this. It's a, it's a website and an app. So strokevan.com. It, yeah, strokevan.com. It's a website. And then there's an app both on uh, an Apple and- I'm and, amazed that that domain was available. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it started back in 2016, 2017. Ah, okay. So it was back. And so, so evolution. So the reason why- we have to talk about technology plus these new stroke trials is because we had all these negative ones, right? And the reason why is the technology was just not very good. I'm sorry, guys. Mercy, have mercy on me. Don't use mercy, please, right? I mean, this was this corkscrew. Was multi it was, was causing multi multi mercy is is a type of technology or is that a company or is this one it's company? Basically, owned it? it's it's like mercy, but it had even like more like more things on it. You know, and 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 these are trials. And the point of the matter is, if the technology can't take out the clot safely and fast, you're not going to help people, right? And so you had these. Are you? Are, would you say that? Would you even go as far to say that with with like uh, mercy and multi mercy approaches that you're better off leaving the clot in because it, ooh, be because of complications and bleeds. And that, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> You know, it took so long. I mean, the the problem is it, it is 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 it took so long. Um, yeah, not good timing too, because like that the time that the Mercy Multi Mercy came out was between 05 and 08, and I can I I can assure you there were a lot of people having strokes in 08. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a tough time, <laughs> oh, was, man. Yeah, <laughs> and so then you have these three trials in 2013, which all showed no benefit, but it was because they didn't pick the right patients and they weren't choosing the new technology. Once the stent treaters come back, 2015. All five trials are positive. Massive difference. Who, which company ran those trials? So good. I'm, 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 I'm glad you asked because I want to recognize industry that supports this. Yeah. And so the two main companies, and, and if I'm missing someone, I am sorry. But um, the main ones were definitely Med, Medtronic with their, with their Solitaire. Rapid AI for artificial in, 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 intelligence um, helped on a lot of those. And then uh, uh, striker trevo uh, stint was was used for for another one, and so now you have now so evolution of stent retriever. So now you went from mercy, 
um, and just, you know, the old aspiration catheters to this amazing new technology. Now, you, you see that, you know, you go from a nitinol cut, mm -hmm. you know, and ones that overlap, like, like you see here. Yeah. And now you have this basically um, seg segmented, like the, the, like, like the embo trap. And, and you get to a snowflake? And, and, yeah. Like, what would you like, like, yeah, that's the Eric from, from, from Microvention. And then there's this one from Phoenix, and then there's this one which actually goes up and down, so it it expands. And this is the Tiger from Rapid Medical. How and so all of these technologies, what they're trying to do, we're trying to grab the clot, but we're also trying to minimize um, any complications. So you, you 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 can make something really stiff, it'll grab the clot, but if it grabs the artery and you're causing brain bleeds, that's a problem. You just made a a, a worse clot. You you you, 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 yeah, you, you essentially expanded you, you, the core yeah. core would it be expanding the core into the yeah. into a penumbra. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so the and so there's all these stint retrievers. These stint retrievers, especially the top two, the the solitaire from Medtronic, it really made all these trials positive, right? Um, and so this is where technology affected the outcome because now we're able to open up not just 50 or 60%, we're able to up 80 to 90% or more of these arteries and, and, and get a lot of blood flow back, right? And so this technology has really helped a lot. Um, and I'm going to go on because there's more. Yeah, go now for it. Now there's, in addition to these stents that can grab clots, there's something called aspiration catheters, and that's really evolved as well. The aspiration catheters have become bigger and bigger, and they're safer and safer. They're softer and softer. And on top of that, not even how you bring them up, right? And so if you look at, Penumbra was the original company that that made as, as aspiration catheters. Shout out just because they're, they're the first and everyone knows that. But their new red line, what they did is they changed the, the coding, which has an increase of 35% um, basically sm smoother, or what's the word? Lube, 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 lubricious, I think. It's more lubricious. Just, yeah. yeah, but essentially it, it reduces so, it reduces the traction along the, those vessel walls. Exactly. Right? And so this new coating al al allows for that. And then another way that you can bring stuff um, up safely, so we talked about Penumbra, is, um, and so you're trying to suck, but then Zoom, what they said is like, if we make it beveled, right, what will happen is, you'll increase the surface area by 15%. So therefore mm. we may be able to suck more. Mm. I'm not saying it does, but I'm saying this is what. And then the Route, route 92, what they did is they're bringing up an 088 or a very fat thing, mm. 088 inches all the way up there. And they have a little noodle, which is called the tensing, which basically allows you to push it up super fast. So now you're not using a wire, you're using this little noodle which is safer, and then you're able to bring up a bigger artery to suck out the clot. Is this kind of similar to some of the, because again, the 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 cerebrovascular stroke area is, is, is new for me. I had to do some reading last night, but are, are, are some of these technologies similar to what you see in the like interventional cardiology world? Similar, but the difference is- But you have is... to be a lot more careful. Correct, exactly. Like, no offense <laughs> exactly. to the cardiologist, no but, like, but like you can be pretty, yeah. I think, like a lot more rough with the heart and ve and, and those vessels versus Correct. what you deal with in the brain. Correct. You yeah. know? There's... Um. Yeah, that's, that's true. So it's similar to body, but like- you can't have any bu bu bubbles because a tiny little thing will, will 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 cause a stroke. Your wires have ha have to be basically much softer. So it's a much it's um it's like body IR and and and, and cardiology. It's more finesse. It's more finesse. Like everything. I matters. hope all the cardiologists heard that. That's no, what no. It's, it's just, I'm just. I mean, that's what I heard. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know, but but the point. You, you just have to finesse it more because you're yeah. dealing with a different type of organ. Yeah, as we you know. said, like. Part of the heart, you still function. You're still forty percent. Part of the brain, now you can't talk. Even though the and those infarct, and those symptoms come out immediately. Correct. Right. Even though the infarct, the area of dead tissue in the heart is this much, the one in the brain is this much. One leaves you with no symptoms, and one leaves you with inability to move for half your half your life. N not to mention, uh, depending on how bad it is, it could be an effect on organs like you know, you, you ability to move your bowels. You know, Correct. those kind of things. That that too. So, Got it. Got it. Um, so that's it. So the evolution of these as well. And this is from a doctor, uh, uh, Vincent, at the Link Paris conference. And he's saying these aspiration catheters, we used to see, you see out here, the stent retrievers in, in 2014, 2015, had all these positive trials. And stent retrievers were doing a, a, a better job in, in the trials anyway. 
But now with these bigger catheters, the new trials, are these bigger catheters going to work even better than stents, these really big, large bore ones? We don't know, but this is kind of how it's going. So I, I, I like this. I like stent versus aspiration catheter because I think it's making us do better jobs. You know, um, in terms of when yeah. you say do better jobs in terms of uh, not just I would imagine like a while back, there was like clear camps and tribes between stent versus aspiration. And Correct. now there's a lot more crossover. There's a which lot more the, crossover. Which, by the yep. way, I'm a big fan of this because like in the orthopedic world, you see a lot of times um, I think and I'm, I'm simplifying this. You'll see two types of surgeons. There's a surgeon who just it has comfort with one set of, uh, yeah. of of technology, and that's because they come with so many different trays and yeah. everything. And they mm -hmm. may, uh, you know, and so mm -hmm. it's hard to switch. Them. There's another one who is well versed in a lot of them and decides like patient by patient what they're going to use. And I think that this is the better approach because certain patients might be better off with a stent approach, other one better with an aspiration. Is, yeah. that, is that your for for me? It's like that. For instance, one of my cases. Are you an aspiration guy or a stent guy? I'm a both guy, man. I'm, and that's, I'm, and that's, I'm, I'm yeah. just... <laughs> and, and that's the way to go, right? You know, I'm just... I'm going to be honest because if someone has a clot here and here, I can't aspirate this one and leave this one. So I'll definitely use a stint here with an aspiration here and I'll pull out both clots at once, right? So I'm, I'm always... Everything is precision personalized stroke care. I'm looking at you as a patient. How can I help you in the safest, fastest possible way? What are all my tools? And that's why I try to learn as many tools as possible because the more your growth, your growth is a patient's hope. Got it. That's it. Got your it. growth is a patient's hope. The more you know, the more tools you have, the more options, the better job that, that, that you can do. Too, too, too much? No, no not, not enough. at all. Not enough, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so when, so now the future is we used to only go after the M1s, these really big ones. We're able, because of this new technology, now smaller catheters, smaller centrifuges, we can go after M2s and M3s, A2s, A3s. Now we're able to do even more, right? And so now we're able to go after smaller clots safely because before we didn't have the technology there. So now we're, we're going after all these other types. And you can see here, this is the internal carotid artery. M1, because it's so big, it's the first part. M2, it splits off. M3 splits off, and M4 is, is the end. Same thing for A. And M stands for middle cerebral artery right here. AC stands for anterior cerebral artery. PCA stands for posterior cerebral artery. See, medicine is not that complicated. Anterior, middle, posterior. That's it. And the first segment, second segment, third segment. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of medicine, but I'm saying, like, if you logically look at things, they're, 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 they're usually labeled in, in ways that, that we can communicate and understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now we're, we're pushing the envelope and we're going more d distally. So why LVO screening? Again, it doubles the people that are functional endovascular thrombectomy up to 24 hours per guidelines. And we said, we can talk to patients, say, hey, this outside of guidelines, but I can still save 30 cc's of your tissue, which may help. We don't know, but this is where the basic science looks like, right? And pre-notification helps. I, you know, we've, we've used VAN, but there's RACE, there's lots of other stuff, right? So this is an important slide. So these are the five trials that, that came out in 2015 that showed this, this massive difference, right? And so if you look, number needed to treat, mm -hmm. three, four, 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 four. If you look at it versus PCI, it's 17, right? It's so gonna... you have something that's four times more effective, you know, than going to the cath lab. But yet nobody knows what a large vessel occlusion is. No one in, in media. Like, I, I mean, like, I think we need to have a massive campaign. And that's why Society of Neurointerventional Surgery had this get ahead of stroke. They're trying to get this out. They're trying to get the EMS what to do that, these. What would that campaign look like? Like just to start understanding how to identify the VAN criteria? Well, well any LVO screening, whether it's the LA motor screen, all, all I want them is to somehow distinguish just fast versus a large vessel occlusion screening tool, whether it's van, race, LA And you, this, LA you want motor this scale. for clinicians or for the general public? I, w I want this for the EMS, for triage, because I think if you're on the field and you're doing it, you need to know which patient may have a large vessel occlusion and take them to a center that is capable of doing a thrombectomy uh, surgery. So your thing is, yeah, because essentially, 
by the time if they go to a, a center that can't do that and when they re- like if you're lucky one day has only passed usually it's gonna be longer and you know the damage yeah. is done correct because we're, correct. We're, we're talking about something that that it's time sensitive it's very time sensitive. okay very time sensitive. i see yeah i see and so and so you, you can see the massive impact you're talking about 10 to 30 percent difference in functional these are people that are functional at 90 days and another thing is people have to realize this if you save tissue it, you're not some people are not going to be instantaneously better some are but really, it's allowing you to rehab. So at 90 days, you have more function. So you may not see a home run right away, which is why it's important. Patients independent at 90 days, right? This is not at 24 hours or 30 days. This is at 90 days. And I think that's a concept that's important. But even going up to 6 to 24 hours with advanced imaging, the CT perfusion and other s- sort of things, you can still have benefit. So I, I love this mm. because this is like visuals like, bam, in your face. Now you see it. This is out of place alone, just TPA, the clot busting medication, what we used to do versus going for thrombect. So, all what, what so I mean, I'll see a place. Uh-huh. This is people that are independent, all right, in the, the, the dark green. This is people that have improved, and these are people we harmed. Do we harm some people? Yes. Two versus look how many more we help. One, two, three, four, five, six, 55. 55 versus two. This, so this was a this was a study or what? No, is this, this is basically we've aggregated we've aggregated all of these. This LPO is a retrospective. It's retrospective. Yeah, yeah, this is taking all these randomized trials and and doing it. And the people that are famous for this, I got to sh- sh- shout out UCLA, uh, Dr. Jeff Saver. He really made this popular, and I think it's a nice way to rep- represent this. And if it's someone else, I'm sorry, but I associate with UCLA. Um, but IV, so explain real quick IV alteplase. What, so what IV alteplase is the clot busting medication. You you just give an IV. This is why you see you have to get to the hospital in three to four and a half hours so we can give you the clot busting medication. But clot if you have busting a, medication, but you have an LVO. for small clots. Right, doesn't work for these massive clots. Got it. And that's where you you, you need. Surgery. And so your 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 biggest thing is that n- knowledge to accelerate the the identification of what the patient has is going to decide whether that patient is going to have a great outcome or not because exactly you can't go you can't go backwards and say oh like you know like it's not like i think there's a lot of things in medicine where you know you you assess you 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 assess a patient it's like okay let's start with like a you know sort of a gentler like you know easier uh, approach to treating this and then if that doesn't work we're going to try this with the brain, you can't do that. No, you have to decide. Like, do we need an aggressive approach, like a thrombectomy, or do we need uh, 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 all the others? Yeah, and I would say, I mean, talking about stroke, but I'm talking about hemorrhagic stroke, subarachnoid hemorrhages, traumatic brain injury, infection, status epilepticus and seizures. As a neuro ICU neurologic emergencies expert, it's like that for anything in the brain, whether it's a clot, whether it's a bleed, whether it's an infection, whether it's seizures, everything. I mean, I feel if if someone if someone put a gun to my head, I said, "How can you improve neurological outcomes?" I would change every center, just like their trauma centers. I would say acute neurological centers where you have someone in house to deal with acute neurological diseases in house, mm. which we don't have anywhere. But why? May, maybe I'll be the first on planet Earth. <laughs> why? Why don't? Why? I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, because we're like, well, the the ED doctor can take care of it. Maybe the the trauma can like de, uh, de- deal with TBI. But I do think having that neurological expertise to recognize things faster, twenty four seven in house, can really make a huge difference. But part of it is there's not enough people to do that. There's not people in training having someone in house 24 seven. So there's lots of logistics and, 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 and supply and demand. So we outsource lots of that neurological emergencies care to other sub subspecialties, right? And so your thing is that since logistically, like the likelihood we're gonna change that logistic, those logistics is unlikely Correct. right now. Right your now. Thing, your thing is like, if we do a better job with education and identification, at least we can get the patient to those centers. Like Correct. From the first time. From the first time Got and, it. Then, and then yeah. help from there. That makes sense. And so why why did I, I in, in, invent fan or have people screen? This is a study I did in Phoenix called Ops, Utilization of Proper um, Imaging or, or Screening for Stroke, okay, UPSS, um, because I want to make as much money as UPSS workers. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I had to. I had to. <laughs> but anyway, in 2016, I looked at these, like, no one was screening for LVOs. The worst type of stroke, zero screening. 
CTA is CT angiogram. It's you inject dye and the CT to see if there's a clot. 40% on patients who had NHL scale of six. The guidelines in 2015 said anyone with NHL scale of six are is supposed to get a CTA so you can look for these. And they only did 40%. Only 40%. Out of those that were done, forty percent was the best. Was the best case. So, oh, no, that's that's the aggregate. So you, you're going from like twenty two to fifty six, but that's still really bad. Yeah, and so then CTA done within one hour, fifty three of the forty percent. That means twenty percent of people that should have gotten a CTA right away actually got it. Right, transfer. You know the CTA is red, but transfer within two hours, fifteen percent. Eighty five percent of people that were being transferred we're taking longer than two hours. And we talked 10% difference per half hour of, mm -hmm. according to I IMS3, that's a lot. So that's why I got passionate about this, right? And then, so there has to be a paradigm shift, which we have done. Just like in myocardial infarction or heart yeah, attack. Yeah, first thing is EKG, right? E EKG, non-ST elevation MI versus ST elevation MI, you go to cath lab, the same thing for stroke. LVO screen with CTA. Non-LVO, you get TPA. LVO, you get TPA plus the neuro IR or, or stroke surgery. Let me let me ask you a question. You yeah. may not know this off offhand, but like mm -hmm. myocardial, myocardial infarction versus stroke, mm -hmm. numbers-wise, if you had to, you know, wh which one's bigger in the United States? Let's I think just... there's more heart attacks, right? but I think the f disability from strokes is much larger. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So, got it, got um, it. And, but, but, but I don't know those numbers. So why did this happen? So we were talking about pers personalities and uh, mm -hmm. how, uh, you know, I did the DISC as as assessment from some of these le leadership ret retreats and stuff. And, um, you know, dominance, inf influence, uh, steadiness, compliance. And my highest thing is is influence. And I really care about people. I'm an, I'm, I'm an extrovert. So stories like this affect me. So when I first started, this was in the Wall Street Journal. Um, some of my patients were featured here. I believe this was in 2018 in the Wall Street Journal. And I had two patients that were neighbors, right? Identical strokes, clot here plus here, basically tandem lesion here and here. One took a long time to come in. The processes weren't, weren't great. One person, they got to me right away. The person that got to me right away, normal. The other person ended up passing away. And that person that passed away was the chief of um, basically of, of fire, right? So this is a first responder, an EMS first responder that ended up passing away because the proper systems of care and screening was not done. And, you know, again, this was in 2014 be, be, before the guidelines, before the trials came out. But this, this just shows you how important it is to identify these things. And so this was in the Wall Street Journal. I just had to share this. Yeah. I, this is an acute stroke. I'm just gonna go through this very fast. Someone comes in, severe coughing, you know, so they likely had a tear in the, in, in the carotid. Um, this is what's called a CT perfusion scan. So this is what's called the cerebral blood volume. You can see it looks the same on both sides. And this is the um, um, blood flow. And this is the mean transit time, how long it takes for the blood to get there. It takes a long time over here and the, and the flow is slow, but the volume is the same. Because the arteries vasodilate, so the volume's the same. That means that tissue's not dead yet. But they look like it's dead, meaning they can't move half their body, right? Um, so this is someone that, 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 that we can save because the volume is up. Or some people say cerebral blood flow less than 30% of, of, the, of, of the other side, depending on definitions, right? But this is the tissue that we can save. And we go in, there's a clot right there. This is how it looks in the face. There's no flow in right behind your eye, right Dang. to your brain. I, I like this. This is where the artery is. Um, shout out Dr. Mark Lozaro from Medical College of Wisconsin, one, one of my mentors. He gave me the slides back in 2012. So, hey man, I'm keeping it real. I'm, I'm, I'm using your slide on this one. <laughs> but- um, It's a good slide too. It's, it's a beautiful slide. It, it illustrates, now you see, and so we go up and we pu pull out that clot and here it is. Here's the stent up here. Here's that uh, catheter. See that? Mm -hmm. yeah, it really shows. And that's the x-ray that, that, that I work under that allows you. And here we, we pulled out the clot. And, and, a, and I believe- a pretty yeah. big clot, it's man. A pretty, yeah. The clots in the brain actually are pretty small in comparison to the rest of, of the body. Yeah, 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 I was going to yeah. say, but- But, but, for, but, but, but that's, that one that's is, a big one. That, that, that's you a save the- you, Yeah, you save the before- 
Uh-huh. No blood flow. No blood flow to the ACL. Oh, wow. Look now. at that. That's a huge difference. I mean, that's half of your brain. That's inability to talk or move half of and your I mean, body. I can only imagine. I mean, I, uh, this is a step one question, but I was going to say the cranial nerves that get affected just because of that. Correct. So the aspiration pneumonia, the, yeah, the, the inability to swallow, air airway issues. Yes, it's, it's a lot of things as well. I'm really proud of us that it took us... We're almost we're almost an hour in, but we took us one hour before we mentioned anything about AI. Yeah. I don't know about you, Ben, but like everybody, everybody and their mother, like you know, there's a saying yeah. in, in Silicon Valley that if you go stand in the middle of Palo Alto and you say AI three yeah. times, a VC will show up and throw money at your and, face. Uh, and uh, <laughs> so this is where 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 AI and stroke is being used. There's there's other things, but I'm, I'm not going to talk and about who's, that. Who's whose whose platform is this? So this is Rapid on the right and or. Your right and left, whatever. Yeah, so this is rapid and, and, and this viz. viz. Yeah. Okay. There's and so this both is, really good companies too. Both very very good companies. I, I I I like them a lot. And so this is basically what they're doing. We're able to look at images much faster, and we're able to communicate with the team. Hey, techs, nurses, yes, this is an LVO. Come on in. And so we're again, everything is about making things faster, faster, faster. I got I got to ask you, and you can you can say pass. Mm-hmm. But between between the two products and platforms, like, do you have a preference for one over the other? And if so. Oh man, you know, you know how many times I've gotten in trouble by pointing out the stuff they they, they miss. People at Viz don't like me. People at Rapid don't like me. Hey, but why? No one likes me. Yeah, but I'm you, sorry because yeah, but, I point out you ain't perfect. No, yeah, that's joking. fine. But what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's wrong with that? No, I, they sh- they they should welcome that, right? Yeah, and look, <laughs> we just we both look. I I know their technology. So do you. We both yeah, acknowledge yeah. they're both good good tech. Yeah, 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 yeah. But saying that, take a second. I mean, feel free. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. say pass. You can say pass. I'm, it's okay. I'm 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 gonna say this. Rapid overcalls some things, but it allows me to identify M2s and M3s and PCAs. More. Okay. So be whereas, and if you want something that will just identify an MCA, like an M1 and ICA, I think Viz works better. It's more accurate that way. But it depends on your definition, mm. right? For me as a clinician, I want to know if there's a seizure and there's hypoperfusion or hypo or hyperperfusion, right? I want it to tell me everything. If there's critical stenosis in the M2 you know, Rapid will pick that up, Viz and Viz may not. And so it all depends on what your goal is. What are you using that that tool for? So I think how you evaluate is like, are you a stroke clinician? Or are you a stroke surgeon or a neurosurgeon that uh, does from back to me? That's what I, I don't okay. want to know about the seizure. I don't want to know about that. Like, like just clots, yes, no, blah, blah, you know? You know, so it depends on what your role is, right? Got it. And Got so it. I think all these things matter, right? Yeah, no, totally. There's nuances. That's why that's why I have the show because like a lot of times you talk about these nuances. Sorry, keep keep going. Yeah. And so this is an, an, an another one just showing that now we're starting to use it for the lungs as well. This is uh, Viz AI showing like be, be before the process and then afterwards we saved f- 52 minutes. Which yeah, is and Viz huge. did a really good job with that early yeah. on. Yeah, they 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 did and. And I think this is, yeah, D- D- Dr. Hassan Amir, Dr. Hassan, shout out to you for, for, for doing this with Viz. But Rapid did also another study, which ironically also showed 52 minutes as well, <laughs> which is, I think, is, 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 is kind of ironic. That it they, is, yeah. They, you know, it doesn't matter what software you use, you still save 52 minutes. Um, and so it's just <laughs> showing everything is speed and it's coming to your phone. Um, and then you can coordinate with other people. You can. That's send the thing. Texts. It's a team. It's the, what I like it's about both these coordination. companies. Rapid and Viz are are have platforms that make this a real team sport. Correct. Because correct. You know, medicine back in the day, like you know, doctor gets to be hero, but like because medicine has evolved, the pathologies have evolved. Yeah. Right. Things are more complicated, and as we've learned more, you know, it's kind of opened up more complexities and nuances. So yeah. it can't just be the physician by themselves you know it, it, there's a care team for a reason oh, right for sure for sure there's there there's no doubt and um one of my uh, uh cases of the week was how how to have as little complications as possible or how to get the team to work together but i talked about psychological safety i especially allow the techs, the nurses, the reps to feel comfortable. I, I have rapport with them. If they see something, they're they're gonna let me know because now we're, we're, we're friends. And so this CCKS continuous knowledge sharing is huge because that trap may have been in 500 cases and this, this is only my 10th or, or 15th right. case, yeah. right? And so you, you, you ha- I mean, you have to be a, a clinician and make the, the correct judgment, 
but get as much information as you can. Like there has to be a a sense of other people have value too. Um, and I think that's helped me a lot. And I think it helped my patients a lot, you know? And so this is just saying that you save money because if you pull out the cloth, they're not in ICU for three, four days, you know? <laughs> and so the door in, door, 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 door out, you know? So basically saying the more you treat, the, the better the length of stay goes down by, by 2.5 days. This was from Viz. Um, and so going faster, identifying this, using the latest stints, aspiration catheters, artificial intelligence, you know, all this helps to make things better. Um, Brainomics is- it, This is it, a new one, I haven't heard of Yeah, so this, this is in Europe, but same thing. They did a study in Europe, same thing, right? And it's before, after AI, uh, before AI, after AI, this is people that are going home functional, same thing, right? Zero to one, look at this. Yeah, that's a big difference compared to, yeah. And so again, it's, it's, it's the same thing, the ability to identify things faster. AI, it's kind of like turning doctors into Doctor Strange. It's a, gr it's a great <laughs> analogy. No, 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 trust me. You know, you, you add all this stuff and it just makes you better. It's, it, it's what's it called? The cloak of what? Cloak, cloak of, of I don't know what it's called. Man, I don't know. I I don't know. That, but it's awesome. But of, I know what you of, mean. You put the cloak, cloak on. Of, 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 of levitation. I think it's levitation. I don't know. But the point of the matter is you use all this stuff, you yeah. know? Precision personalized stroke care. I'm gonna go up through this in two seconds. Go for it. And then, and then we should be done pretty soon. Guidelines is bare minimum, man. Guidelines is like, don't sue me because of part of guidelines. That doesn't mean that's the only option. There's more options, right? There's all these trials for all these things that, 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 that we don't know. So that's the bare minimum. I always read and engage. I try to go to conferences. I don't publish as much as I used to. It's okay. You, you can publish, but I'm going to read your paper and your paper and your paper and your paper, and I'm going to get as much knowledge as possible so I can be the house MD of neurosciences. That's mm. my goal is to give the best possible care, right? Um, localize, be a clinician. Don't just be a technician, be a clinician. What's going on? Where's the clot? You know, what does Viz show? What does Rapid show? What, you know, like all this, put, put, put the history mm -hmm. together. All this is very important, you know? Going the extra mile for, for patients, it's really helped. So for me, I localize with exam, something called aspects. Score is how much dead tissue there is. How you read it uh, matters. I was gonna say, uh, it, you unpack know? that, the, does the imaging in the exam correspond? That's Correct. really important because too many people, yep. too many physicians, regardless of specialty, default immediately to the exam. Or, 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 not the, or no, I'm sorry, not the exam, the, 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 the imaging, imaging, I'm sorry, the imaging. Right? And, and this huge. is where, this huge, is where, I mean, huge. technology is really important, yep. but you have to keep your, your, your clinical skills yep. extremely sharp yep. as a, as a clinician. Yeah. This is this is my personal opinion. Yeah. Like without, like if there is a, you know, if you're dropped in a third world country, can your clinical skills help diagnose without all the technology, right? Yeah. And those things should be corresponding. We should not be over indexing on one thing, right? I, oh, it's huge. That's huge. So for me. The Talabar porch precision first line stroke care, no time window, not volume, but location. So even if there's 70 cc's dead, and I have a case here, we, I mean, I'll go through it fast, but 90, 100 cc's dead, right? But it was primarily temporal and frontal lobe. I saved 20 cc's of the parietal lobe, the patient is moving again from complete hemiplegic mm. to moving, no visual field cut and function, mm. right? So there's, it's not volume, it's location. What tissue is dead, what, what, what can I save? Again, precision, examine, localize, look at imaging, what is dead, what is not, can I help you, can I not? And go, go that extra mile beyond M1, M2s, M3s, which, which we showed before, and how I approach it. If it's in a clinical trial, I feel it's okay that I offer it if the world and the IRB signed off, there's clinical equipoise, it's okay. I feel it's okay as for me as a physician to offer that that type of care. Um, and you know, saying Vizin Rapid and all these other ones work great, but but that they're not perfect. This is the auto aspects, and it just shows that, you know, sometimes it's accurate, some sometimes it's not. My thing, new, new to planet Earth, maybe, maybe not. Apache aspects, that means this is these are all the different areas that we count. Um and if there's 10 areas that, that, that are dead, you know, then, then you get a score of zero. That means it's all dead. 
If you have 10 out of 10, that means it's all still alive. But I didn't count it if only part of it is dead, mm. right? Because there's other cells around there. If I restore function, that area of, c- comes back. And so how you read that, the aspects is important as well. And different people read it differently. Quick, you, quick you, you question. You see how the nuance of everything you do matters? Yeah, 100%. Sorry. Quick, quick <laughs> question about about this. When it comes to regeneration of, mm-hmm. of, of cells, right? Yep. You mentioned like if if a certain, if it's not too much, like you can pull back and the and the cell can regenerate, right? Some, some of the neurons can. Does yeah, the brain would, have this? Or, or I would say they're stunned. Okay. So on, stunned. On yeah. a zero, okay. Mm. I don't know what zero would be. On a zero to 10 scale, let's say 10 being the liver, because like you can like regenerate a good amount of your liver. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. Where, where does the brain fall? 10 <laughs> being li, 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 like 10 is like your, your, those cells are like liver cells. They can regenerate super easy. So I, so, so I work on kids as well. You know, I, I, I do no, kids. No, sorry, real quick. Um, maybe eight or nine is liver. 10 would be like, like stem cells, right? Yes. Yeah, stem cells. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, what an amateur move on my end, man! Shame I would say the the brain is probably one of the worst organs that 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 that, that does that. It's like one or two, right? Um, but it's not zero. It's not zero. That's it's the not point. zero. Huh. Okay. I think it's one or two. But again, it's in certain cases and younger people with neuro neuroplasticity, I think, have much more. So as that's, as that's, we get older, it's, yeah. it's not as well. And because this is, of the lack of neuroplasticity. Because of lack of, of and, neuroplasticity. And, for the, and can you explain for the for like the audience who are yeah. not clinicians, what is neuroplasticity? So neuroplasticity is the ability for one part or one part of the brain to take on a new function. So this is, this is classic because to me, the brain is just a sensation organ, right? It senses and does things. And so, um, you know, that's why a bird his brain can tell if there's electromagnetic fields, right? Or um, someone's vision can tell heat or not, like a snake, right? I mean, I'm just giving an example. I'm not sure if that's right. But the point of the matter is it's a sensory organ. You can teach it how to, how to do m- multiple things. So neuro- neuroplasticity is real, and it's much more so in kids. So that's what, And that's kind of why, like, as a child, it's very easy for a kid to learn two, three, four languages. Correct. Versus when you're older, you lack neuroplasticity. It's, it's a lot harder. But at the same time, with new techniques, I think the older brain can learn just as well. If, I, if, I think if, so, if, too. If it's not better, but I'm... I'm I'm not going to go into that because yeah. cause, cause, cause then we'll be that's, here for five hours. That's what I was going to say. That's, that's why you got to come, <laughs> come back. You got to come back on the show. And so this is basically the app saying how you should localize because sometimes they will miss it on, on imaging. Um, and so I plugged it into the Stroke Van app. It said in, uh, superior or the superior branch of the MCA. Again, it was missed on imaging, but you see it there. Boom, I found it. Pull, pulled out the clot. The, the, the patient is back to normal. Um, again, M M two. Some of the software will 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 miss it. We pulled out the clot. Critical stenosis. Um, sometimes you'll miss an ICA. M twos. You know. So you have to know what your software can and can't do. Mm. That's all I'm trying to say. And then this is this is where you have to know neuroanatomy. So if my case of the week, um, there's an the the AI case of the week talks about this case. How the software missed it. But because I knew there's something called the duplicate MCA, because I know neuroanatomy, that's why knowledge, basic knowledge of neuroanatomy, and just the more you know, like the better, then I, 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 I picked that up. So that's important too. Um, back of the brain, basilars are, are, uh, arteries are not picked up. Outside hospital said tissues all dead. Again, you have to know that when, when you do CT perfusion within the first 90 minutes, it's not accurate. So this patient was 41, man. And... Hospital X in Phoenix, Arizona, a couple of world-renowned places said no. I'm like, no, this is inaccurate. It's done within the first 60 uh, or within the first like like, like 90 minutes, 120 minutes. That that perfusion is inaccurate. Pull pulled out the clot, right? So you have you you have to read. You have to know when is perfusion imaging accurate. When 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 is it not? So is it that they do it too early or too late? Basically, because the perfusion was done so early, it doesn't mean it was necessarily dead, uh, right? And so these nuances matter, right? Mm. And so I ended up pulling the clot, the patient is, is moving both sides in normal. Large core, look how huge that is. What is that? 119 cc's, 119 really cc's dead. It can't move half their body, normal. Back to normal, why? Because it's it's not the amount of tissue that's dead, it's which tissue is dead and what function does, does it have. I had to do this, look, it's actually 
can it's see a, it's, it's a lot. It's dark. It's, it's actually, really yeah. massive. Yeah, right? One ten. I see what you did here because you, you started off this, this this talk with like the 20 cc, the 30 cc, and then you just hit us with that 119 yeah, cc. Yeah, because now the new trials are showing that there is benefit. It may be only 10% or 15%, but that's still benefit, mm. right? And so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to play this video, but, but that patient's normal. Um, so basically, social media. Do you, do you want to ask me about case of the week? No, I'm just absolutely. Joking. I want you to. No, I want you to talk about case of the week because also I want you to come and do do case of the week live on our show. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. So tell us about case of the week. So basically, um, um, you know, we talked about CKS uh, continuous knowledge sharing, and I love to teach, right? And I'm not in an academic center. I'm like, this is a way for me to share stuff, but. What it does is when you share with people, people start to share with you. So people will actually send me, hey, how about this? How about this? So I'm actually getting knowledge from them by me sharing. And so I started doing this about a, a year ago, and I think it's had a, an, an impact. The number of neurovascular physicians that are teaching Tuesday, case of the week from Switzerland, all this stuff, it's amazing. It's really, uh, I think it's empowered and told physicians it's okay to share these 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 types of cases totally and and you know i think it's advice it's teaching it's a morale booster for people locally like our local ed physicians admin nurses everyone knows oh we're doing this amazing work i'm like yeah we've been doing this for nine ten years but now they like see it so it, it's it's so it has lots of things it it i think sharing has lots of positive i'm not saying that there's no negatives but i'm saying there's lots of positives yeah and you can follow me here, Muhammad Talib on LinkedIn, Talib underscore Neurovascular on IG, or at Stroke Van on, on Twitter. And yeah, I was going to say, I was like, where can we find you online? I was going to say, just, just like, just like side note, like the Instagram handle is lit. It is, it is, there's some, ba there's some basketball videos in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And know. I was like, I was like, I was like, Kobe? I don't Kobe, know. That. You know, I'm... I may be the new basketball coach for the LA Lakers. I'm just letting, I'm letting it's you know possible. that I'm I'm, I'm available. I'll, I'll I'll do some like psych psych training for them. I will I will have their brain optimized to win that championship for you. There we <laughs> go. There we go. So just Dr. Sub, just kind of like in in, in wrapping up. And again, I want to have you back on the show. So for one, you know, if you're a physician listening to this, I just want to remind you, click the link below and unlock that CME credit. Um, if you're doing these uh, social media posts, I'm going to try and do a better job because I can actually add CME credits to social mm -hmm. posts, right? Okay. So we should do that for your for your um, your your case of the week. Yeah, I want mm -hmm. you to have back, but if you can kind of summarize, uh, you know, sort of the state of stroke, mm -hmm. you know, just in, in a sort of a summary and take, like what are the main things that you want to see the medical community really adopt? You, you mentioned better education for identifying yep. the severity of stroke. Yeah, yeah. Right, so not yeah. all stroke is created equal. Time yeah. is brain. Yeah. And knowing where to send them is going to be important because then also that's like, I think there's a there's an economic uh, thing there because the other side is that you can get too sensitive about it and something that's, let's say, not not an LVO, mm -hmm. you get you send them to a, a center yeah. and yeah. that's going to be a lot more expensive for something sure. that could have gone locally, right? Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. So I think this... The state of stroke is where MI was 10, 15 years ago, but the only difference is we're able to be much more precise because of artificial intelligence, because of CTA, angiogram, and, and perfusion, and all this advanced imaging, and the fact that, that there's an exam, it's not just I have chest pain. So I think we're more, we're more precise, but um, we're not where um, the cardiology community for MI is. I see. Uh, but but I think we're we're getting there. We're more laser. Mm. We're 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 more of a laser surgery. This is exactly it. This is this type of advanced imaging, and so that's 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 where we are. But we have a long way to go. I mean, really. I mean, someone asked me about this. They're like, like like how do I identify even earlier? I'm like have a ring, and like a watch. And as soon as as there's as there's lack of movement or lack of 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 electrical signal. That needs to go to the hospital or something. So I think wearables are where the 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 future are. Artificial intelligence, like you know how in China there's uh, cameras everywhere. Cameras everywhere. Boom! Some someone's having a stroke. Boom! Activated. So I think I think it's 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 
it's beyond just someone identifying it. I think we need to use where, technology where in we, our we environment. Need, we use technology in our environment to identify strokes even faster. And I think part. I think the key here and also. Oh, go ahead. One last thing: prevention. Prevention. And if we can prevent it, that's even better. <laughs> now, well, I was going to say the other other side. I think. I think awareness of something is important. You know, the, it's on. interesting how the brain works. The brain has not evolved in thousands of years and it won't evolve, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because w that's why like social media is such a powerful thing. Our brain assigns importance to the thing that we see most often. Correct. Right? And so I think raising awareness is good. In terms of like industry, you know, there are some big players out there. So Metro So the big big players in the stroke world would be Medtronic, Penumbra, who, who else? Striker. Striker. Um, Microvention has really stepped step, up their, their, their game with new products. There is, um, there is uh, imp imp Imperative Care, which is coming out with new catheters. Uh, there's Seranovis, Johnson, Johnson & Johnson. Um, you know, R R Rapid Medical is, is coming out with, with, with new things. Balt. M m medical coming over from France is big too. So there's, there's, there, there's all these players. And one last thing is I'm a huge um, supporter of, of industry because I believe, you know, I set all these trials, right? But if we don't work together, we're not going to give patients the best possible outcome. So, oh. I mean, I, I am in support of participating, consulting for, for industry. We're working with industry, you know, as long as it's patient focused, I'm good. Yeah, you know, and so and 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 I told you how I do work with lots of people from 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 the industry, and um, and I really value their their opinion. I I really do. Yeah, and I think you know there's there's um, some teamwork that's there. Like I mean, look what we're doing right now in terms of yeah. raising awareness for this. And what yeah. I would like to see more from industry is you know supporting uh, this type of new form of education beyond yeah. just conferences. Because like I love the conferences, um, but. Mm. You need something in between those conferences that's ongoing. So like, on, you know, these social media, media posts, the live streams, podcasting, everything. And so, um, you know, I have some good industry sponsors that we, we like to get more, but just to kind of support and really drive this home and make MedTech great again. Yeah. I don't know if MedTech was ever great, but definitely <laughs> I want to make it great again. You know what I mean? Um, last, last question for you is just in general um, for like, uh, this is a selfish question for me. But um, what are some of the some of your favorite conferences to go to? You know, not just for stroke, but for you know cerebrovascular conferences. Any conferences that come to mind that are worth checking out? Because I want to check some out. So the biggest neurovascular conference would be the International Stroke Conference, which will be in Phoenix in February, I, I, I believe. Got it. So that's probably the biggest one. But then all the other smaller ones are good, like Link. You know, they they have one in Paris and. Um, here in, 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 in America, Society of Neurointerventional Surgery, uh, Society of Vascular Interventional Neur Neur Neurology. There's there's lots of these ones that, that are smaller, that are very good. I love the Neurocritical Care Conference because I think being a, a clinician is key as well. American Academy of Neurology, CNS, which is Congress- CNS is a good one, yeah. Uh, Congress of uh, Neurological Surgeons because with, 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 within stroke and endovascular neurology and neurosurgery and uh, interventional neuroradiology, we work very closely, like you know, and so American Society of of neuro uh, of neuroradiology, like, and I think that's important. I think we need to work as a neuroscience team, right, right? and not just siloed off departments. Yeah, I mean that 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 just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, I know it doesn't you're, work. You're not it doesn't work in our, in industry or in, in companies this, either. This doesn't this this surgeon that thinks that they can do everything on, on their own just, just doesn't. That uh, makes sense. Look, right. Dr. Taleb, <laughs> look, I really appreciate you flying flying to San Diego. We're going to do this again. This is a blast. you know. Um, and I want to thank our audience. So again, if you're a clinician, I want to remind you, check the show notes below. Click that CME link to unlock your AMA PRA Category 1 CME credit. Make sure that you type a couple of sentences of what you learned. That's one button. The second one is what will you do? And if you're a listener of the show, I'm going to su suggest that A, make sure to subscribe to the show. We're number one in MedTech. We're trying to climb the charts, be number one in medicine. And please do us, you know, give us a like on the video, five stars, write a review. It makes a huge difference. And until next time, I'm your host, Omar Khatib, and this is another episode of the State of MedTech. We'll see you next time. 
Thank you for enjoying another epic episode of the State of MedTech. If you're feeling inspired and love this episode, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you never miss an episode. And be sure to give us five stars and write a short review because that helps more people discover this amazing community of ours. If you're a company who has a executive that you'd like to be on the show, or perhaps you want to sponsor one of the episodes, shoot us an email at hello at katibandco.com. Take care and we'll see you next time.